Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining this uh, for joining us today on Wednesday, the 20th of October, 2020, on Vision Store's second Exploring Technology with David Woodbridge webinar on wearable technology. My name is Tony Wu, and I'll be one of your hosts, and I'm joined by my fellow colleagues, David Woodbridge, who is our National Retail AT Advisor, and Sasha Lewis-Driver, who is one of the Retail State Lead service, Services Manager. I would like to begin the session by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today. I would like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Please note that the webinar is being recorded for those who cannot attend or stay for the entire session and you can access the recording later via our Vision Australia um, and Vision Store YouTube channels. This is an interactive session, so please submit any questions that you may have for David, myself or Sasha um, during the session by using our chat box. For those that use a screen reader, you can access the chat function through keystrokes Alt H or Command H if you use a Mac. And we'll answer as many questions as we can and as many as time permits. Welcome, Sasha and David. Howdy, howdy. Hello, how are you? I'm well, thanks. Uh, we know that wearable technology is worn by the user and it allows for hands-free interaction or at least minimise using hands when operating the device. And they have the potential to assist those that have a vision impairment to access information, have more independence and an improved quality of life. David, what wearable technology devices do you use? Right, well, if I'm going into full geek mode, which means I basically wear almost everything that I've got, probably minus about two or three things, because I think about seven or eight is getting a bit silly. So the things I, I wear all the time is, of course, my Apple Watch, which is on my left wrist at the moment. Um, for testing purposes, I tend to wear my Samsung Galaxy Watch on my right wrist, which means I'm starting to look more and more like a geeky person. And then I always wear my Sunu band, um, which is the orientation and mobility device that vibrates when you get close to an object. Um, and so they're probably the three main things that I wear on my wrist. And because we're talking about wearables, you've also got, you know, things on your head like um, headphones. So the two major headphones that I always wear, of course, are the Aftershocks, which are the bone conduction headphones. I wear the AirPods all the, the time. And just one that we'll be talking about, particularly today because it only came out a little while ago, is the Beats Flex, which is a very cheap pair of Bluetooth headphones. And then, of course, um, for me personally, I don't use it, but low vision users it, find it extremely great, particularly when viewing things near or far, which is the RS Vision, low vision wearable magnifier. And then, of course, the Orc Cam um, system, which comes in various formats, which Tony can tell us about later. But I definitely use an Orc Cam for checking things out in the pantry um, and I've got a pair of classes that I normally have them on. So that in a nutshell is all the wearable devices, barring a few, which I wear I will use all the time. David, you mentioned the um, Aftershocks headphones mm -hmm. um, being bone conducting. Why would yep. they be um, useful for someone who has low vision or who is blind? So a couple of good things about the bone conduction headphones. So I'm just going to hold these up visually. And for those who can't see the screen, um, what they've got is a band that goes around behind your neck. They come over to the side of your head. And then before your ears, um, I tend to call them barrels. They're not rounded, but they're sort of a, a rectangular square shape, quite thick. And both of those contain the batteries and the, the buttons to control the actual unit, like volume up and volume down, on and off charging all that sort of stuff but where it sits in front of your ears are these two pods and the pods sit right next to your or on your cheekbones and then they transmit the sound through your cheekbones into the inner ear which means from an orientation and mobility point of view you can hear what's going on around you you can hear traffic uh, you can hear the bus pull in to the bus stop you can hear the train pull into the platform all that sort of stuff uh, while you're still using you know, your speech output in particular on your iPhone or Android device, or if you're using any other device. So I, I can also pair, I can also pair these to my Galaxy Watch or Apple Watch if I also like. But I guess mainly the fact is that the sound's going through your cheekbones because it's bone conduction and leaving your ears free to listen to what's around you. That seems like a great device for someone who is um, vision impaired to be able to mm. hear 
um, the environment around you, so you're actually a bit more safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. And like, can I also say it's very good when you're a husband or a dad that you don't ignore one's wife and you also don't ignore one's children because getting people yelling at and going, David, David! And it's like, oh, sorry, I didn't hear you. I wasn't working. I wasn't working. I was just listening to some beautiful music in the background and I'm very sorry. So with these ones, um, yep, anybody can get my attention when they need to. Excellent. And you mentioned um, uh, another um, earbuds, the Apple ones. Yeah, look, these ones are quite interesting. And um, I've just realized I don't know where I'll put them. <laughs> I guess I do. Um, what, what I'll do is, while you're talking about something else in a minute, because I left them up on the, you should see my room, folks. You probably can't see it on the video, but I am almost like sitting in, well, my boys call it the toy room. I call it the toy room well because I have almost got every single gadget under the sun that I test, evaluate and recommend. Um, and I've got a whole bookshelf behind me um, that's just full of stuff charging. And that's where I unfortunately left the Boots Flex. Um, actually, Tony, um, what I might do, you know, it's going to take me 30 seconds to just walk across the other side of the room. So I might do that. Um, so I shall be back in a, a tick. Um, it won't take me that long to do it. Thank that's you. okay. Right, Thank you. We'll see you shortly. Um, so David mentioned that there are other wearable devices that Vision Store sell um, or promote, um, one being the Iris Vision. So the Iris Vision is basically a, a smartphone um, with proprietary software that allows the user to magnify um, an image they want to be able to see through any distance. So whether it's something that's close up, something that's far away, or something that's intermediate. So some of the, I guess, applications you would be able to use the Iris Vision for would be reading tasks. So reading a newspaper, for example, or maybe doing food preparation, um, preparing your meals, using it to look at your computer, or maybe um, looking at something in the distance, like watching your grandkids play sports or um, uh, attending a, uh, a musical um, as some of the things that you could do with the Iris Vision. Um, and all you have to do is um, magnify what you want to be able to see, um, which is very simple using um, the, the control panel, which is on the right-hand side of the unit. Um, and by swiping uh, up and down or left and right, you'll be able to zoom in and zoom out. So the Iris Vision is um, a, a great magnification uh, tool, which is wearable and allows for hands-free tasks as well. Um, that mm -hmm. Sasha should have mentioned uh, with the wearable devices. So if you feel that um, the Iris Vision might be uh, applicable to you, I would highly recommend that you attend one of our vision stores mm -hmm. so you can have um, an actual play and trial of the actual unit itself. Mm -hmm. Um, David, do you have your earbuds? <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do have my earbuds. I was, so look, how organized my room is. I could just walk straight over and grab them. All right, so I'm going to hold these up again now. This probably won't fit in the whole camera view, but what I've got here is these are these one of these ones, what I call them a neck band pair of earphones. So you've got this little neck strap here. Yes, they are. Okay, to use a pacemaker, I just heard that one. Um, so the, the band goes over the back of your head, and that's actually very thick band um apple's got some weird and fantastic name for it but it's look it's very strong strong it doesn't flex too much and then at each end of the part that goes around your neck you've got these two what they call control modules and the control modules on if i hold them in the right way around the control module on this side is where you've got um volume up and volume down and then you've got this little button and it's inside intentionally because if I hold them like that, that's the way they would go over the back of my neck. So in the inside unit here, I've got a button. And for those that are like me and you remember the, the good old days of having the clicker on the wire of the earphones that came with your iPhone, that little round button, if you press it once, it plays. If you press it again, it pauses. If you press it twice, it goes to the next track. If you press it three times, it goes to the previous track. All the usual things that the good old clicker used to do. Um, and then under here, you've got an open port. And I just wish for purposes of water, sweat and dust, I wish this port was actually a bit um, more protected. Uh, Apple says it's not too bad. It'll put up with some things. By the way, these um, earphones are not water rated at all. So... They're not IP rated, so don't take them out in the, you know, the water 
uh, as in raining. Don't use them at the gym if you sweat a lot. Um, and the, the other side here has really only just got one button on it, and that's your on-off button and your pairing button to your smartphone, your iPhone, and so on. And then you've got the, if I just hold them like that, what happens down the bottom here, and this is the sort of the business end of the earphones, you've got two ear pods, of course, one of which each goes in your ear, uh, and you've got adjustable little covers that or the tips that go over the, each of the ear pods or earphones, and you've got four different sizes. But the really cool thing about these headphones is when, did, when they're together magnetically, they will start and stop music playing. So at the moment, if I had them like that, it means my music stops playing. If I open them up, it'll start playing the music as soon as I put them in my ears. And the really cool feature that I love about these ones is when your phone's ringing, rather than having to grab it out of your pocket and answer it and so on and so on, you can just put them on. And as soon as it detects that they're in your ears, because you've actually pulled the magnets apart to put them on, it'll answer the phone call. And the same deal, when you want to hang up the phone call, pat them out of your ears, back together magnetically, and they'll hang up. Um, and people that are sort of in the Apple universe might have heard about something called the, the W1 chip. Um, and basically that allows you to automatically pair these earphones to your iPhone, to your iPad, to your iPod touch. This comes up for little... A uh, little box that, that says, you know, join join these Beats Flex. Um, and that's very easy to use. So between my Apple Watch here uh, and my iPhone, they're, they're beautiful. Sound wise, if you can imagine the sound is a mid range sound. So what I mean by that is the frequencies are shifted higher up the scale. So if you're used to Beats that's got the boom, 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 really good bassy sound, um, these don't have that. It's very good for spoken word podcasts or listening to speech output like talk back on android or uh, voiceover the screen reader on the iphone ipod touch or ipad but i don't seriously think unless you didn't mind listening to sort of tinny music um they're not really that fantastic listening to music but again they're only 79 dollars australian and considering that we don't get earphones in the chart in the boxes of the iphones anymore um and particularly if you want a pair of Decent Bluetooth headphones for talking because the core quality is excellent. Uh, listening to podcasts, talking books from Business Australia Library, these ones are fantastic. So they're called the Beats Flex. As I said, $79 from the Apple Store, or you can, of course, buy them via Vision Australia if you like, um, but really good headphones to use. So that's the Beats Flex uh, that only came out about a, month, about a month or so ago. Thanks, David. It seems like there are a variety of different headphones that will be applicable to everyone's needs and mm. they are accessible for people with vision impairments. Mm. You did mention that um, you use the Apple Watch. Yes. Um, for what purpose would someone with a vision impairment might use the Apple Watch for? Right. It's actually funny because I was asked to write some points on this this morning for somebody else at Vision Australia, and I think I got to point 31 yeah, in the list. <laughs> so I won't go through all 31 points now because <laughs> you probably don't want to know about them all. Okay. So let's just start from the, the, the initial stuff. So I've currently got the, I've got the S6 on my wrist. Uh, and for all intents and purposes, the other brand new watch is called the Apple SE. And the only difference between the Apple Watch SE and the S6 primarily is the always on display, which means for a sighted person, you can sort of glance down at your watch screen and just get it to show the time to you. The other one is the oxygen sensor for your blood oxygen sensor. So it would detect how much block, how much oxygen you've got in your bloodstream. Now that's used by doctors and medical practitioners and everything. And I'm not going to go into it because I'm not a medical professional, um, because what Apple sees the uh, the Apple Watch is it's a health and wellness device. It's not a health monitoring device. But the thing about the oxygen level, when my son had a bit of a sleep test, it was interesting because it was the blood oxygen level. It was one of the things that they checked when he was actually sleeping at night time through all these fancy sensors. So it does come in, it does come in handy. Um, and when you put that in with your heartbeat checking, how much you're moving during the day, how many calories are you burning, how's your heartbeat. Um, I know the one that used to irritate people a lot was, you've been sitting for 50 minutes. Uh, here's a stand reminder to help you get up and move. Um, and particularly since I've been working from home since March, I've been very prone to sitting down for more than 50 minutes. And it's good to just have this little reminder to 
get off your bottom and um, and do some exercise or at least walk around. So exercise and wellness is, is really fantastic. From a low vision point of view, you do have a excellent large print watch face and it's just got the numbers on the screen. Nothing else fancy, just the numbers because after all, there's a watch um, that tells you the time. Um, so that's actually extremely good. The other thing about the low vision thing too is that, oh, this is just for blind people too. You can always use Hey Siri in the way you can use HEY Siri on your iPhone, iPod Touch, iPad. Um, so sometime in very windy weather when I'm using my cane, uh, sometimes I get a bit disorientated. So I tend to cross corners diagonally, end up in the wrong street. So I'll just raise my Apple Watch up in front of me and just say, HEY Siri, where am I? Uh, and she'll come back and yep, I've definitely been going in the opposite direction to where I wanted to go. So the HEY Siri function is really, really good. If you are a senior who is prone to falling, and I take this extremely seriously because my wife has got a physical disability, um, neuropathy, and she can fall any time without any warning. And what happens when you, when you fall with the Apple Watch, it will detect that you've had a fall and it will say to you, it'll set off a little alarm and it will say, uh, you've got a certain period of time to cancel this, otherwise we will call triple zero contact your emergency contacts with your information and we'll just and the triple zero normally just then just dispatches an ambulance um, so from a protection point of view a four point of view it's actually really 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 good so um, that one my wife uses all the time um, except she tends to she, I mean because she's so used to used to falling she just basically counsels it now and just yells out to me that I'm okay so that's so that's good um, the other interesting things about the Apple Watch, and again, this is from a blind and low vision perspective, if you're in an absolutely fascinating meeting and you're so fascinated that you don't want to see people you check the time or you check the time, you can just tap on your Apple Watch and it will literally, what it's doing now, vibrate the time at you. So you can sort of have your hand discreetly under the table and uh, quietly check the time um, if you want to check the time. So. Just from that point of view, it's it's really excellent. The other thing I, I always love to talk about the Apple Watch um, is the fact that the bands are really easy to change. So if I just rip this off my wrist, under here on the back, we've got two buttons on either side. Now, if I just push in that button, I just slide it off. That's how easy it is to take off an Apple Watch band. And then you just slide it back on and slide it back on again when you need to. Um, I have different bands. This one's my favorite one. It's like a, a, a Velcro band um, and it actually works really nicely. And I, I tend to use this most of the time when I'm gardening or, or being outside. Um, I've got a nice stainless steel one that I use um, for when I'm you know, going into corporate settings. Um, I've got a leather band that's sort of very cute and stylish. Um, I've got the, the rubber band, otherwise called the flu, fluoroelastoma band from Apple. Uh, and that's just a general old sports band. So there's lots of different bands you can get. You can also get third party bands um, and they work really nicely as well. Um, and I'll, I'll finish up soon, Tony, because I know I'm getting a bit too excited about the Apple Watch. Um, but the other thing about the Apple Watch is the fact that if you use accessibility functions such as voice over the screen reader, Zoom screen magnification, larger fonts, all that sort of cool stuff that you've come used to using on other Apple products, that's all built into the Apple Watch as well. Um, and just one final feature that I use all the time as a blind person, you pop down your iPhone in the house somewhere, somebody moves it on you, of course, because you take no responsibility for losing your own things as a blind person, well, I don't. And um, you, go, you, you bring up your Apple Watch, you tap on the control center, tap on ping, and it pings it and makes the watch play a sound so you can track it down to where you've put it in the house, which normally means it's normally sitting in my computer bag or shoulder bag, or I've just left it somewhere else. So that also comes in quite handy. So look, overall, it's one of the most accessible, fully featured phones um, that I've ever come across. Sounds like there are a lot of great features um, on the Apple Watch for someone who is vision impaired. Mm. What about an Android user like myself? What um, Android watches would be available, David? Okay, so the first thing that we tend to say at Vision Australia is don't get any um, watch that has the what's called the Android Wear or the, the Watch Wear software in it. Because for, for more tens and purposes, it's a really poor implementation of a smart watch from an accessibility point of view. But luckily, um, 
for people that use um, Samsung phones and, of course, generic Android phones. You got, have this beautiful watch that I've got on my right wrist. Um, and by the way, folks, you're going to hear me say beautiful and fantastic for each device I'm talking about because each one of them has got their own uniqueness about them. So this watch to me is your ultimate watchy watch because like the, the, the Apple Watch is, re- is sort of rectangular squarish shape. The Apple Watch is round and big and buffy, um, which is probably not okay if you're a lady and you want a smaller watch. So this is 46 millimeters in diameter. But what's really cool about, and I love it about this watch, it's got this, it's got this mechanical band on the outside. And when you turn it, let me just put it up to the mic. You might not be able to hear that clicking sound, but it actually clicks when you turn it. So you're turning this digital dial to move options on the watch. And it's just, I don't know, it's just like you're using a good old fashioned mechanical watch. So I love that bit. There's also a particular watch face on this one that the Apple Watch doesn't do. And it makes that beautiful soft tick, 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 tick sound that an Apple, that, that a normal watch makes. So I will often in, in, in my moments of, you know, meditation, literally hold my uh, Galaxy watch to my ear and just relax, <laughs> you can hear the ticking. So that's a bit tragic from a techie geeky point of view. Um, accessibility wise, look, you've got voice assistant on it, like you've got on your Samsung phone, good speech. You've got some low vision options mm-hmm. on there as well. You do have a large watch face. Um, as I said, it will work with not only Samsung, but other Android phones. If I really wanted to, I could, I could pair this phone with my Apple Watch as well, oh, with my, sorry, my iPhone, because it does have a Galaxy Watch app on iOS or the iPhone. Um, but because I support both Android and uh, iOS Apple stuff, then it's great to have this one. This one's got some interesting other features on it that um, the Apple Watch is only just caught up with. So the Apple Watch has now got sleep detection in it to check out how you're going to sleep at night. Um, That's already in the Galaxy Watch already. It's got the breathing mode in it. So when you do your breathing in and out for, you know, six breaths per minute, um, it does have that same as the Apple Watch. One one thing it has got, which I think, and I can't quite work out how to use it, it's got this stress gauge. So you, you, you wander over to the stress gauge on the main screen and it must be a stress level from zero to 10. Um, and I must be an extremely relaxed person because it always reckons my stress level is one um, or two if I'm being a bit busy. Um, And it's just fascinating. So I'm assuming that's probably, I don't know, it must be based on my heartbeat. So if my heartbeat's not my normal 54 beats per minute, uh, maybe it thinks if it's, you know, 64 or something, I'm I'm getting a bit anxious or stressed or something. But I've never been quite able to work it out. But look, the only downside I can see to the, the Galaxy Watch, and, and this is particularly for blind people that use a screen reader, you're actually stopped by using applications by Samsung. So if I go and try and use a Spotify app, it'll come back, the screen reader, will, oh, sorry, the Apple Watch will come, the, geez, the Galaxy Watch will come back and say, oh, hello, you're using Voice Assistant. You're not allowed to use this application because we've deemed it not to be accessible. Um, or you're using the, I think there's one there, that, which is a calculator app. And it'll get, it'll pop up and say, look, I'm really terribly sorry. It doesn't say that. Uh, sorry, you can't use this application because they're using voice view. So uh, voice assistant. So there's a few cases like that, which you do not get on the Apple watch. And we all know as blind or low vision people, you always find ways around things to do things. So wherever you've got to jump through the loops seven times compared to a quite sighted person who only has to go through the loops once, I think we should be allowed to do that. So having this watch, the Galaxy Watch, say that I can't use it because I'm using access technology, um, I think it's a little bit on the old appalling side. But overall, as a smart watch to get your notifications, check your email, get your messages, do do exercises, all the general stuff that you can do uh, on the Apple Watch is quite good. Overall, I'd probably still put the Apple Watch ahead by a fair margin ahead of the Galaxy Watch, but it's certainly nothing that's bad or horrible about it besides that uh, thing about the apps, um, but a very, very nice watch. With, and particularly if you want sort of the mechanical twisting backwards and forwards, I say to my son, um, who's slightly autistic, this is daddy's fidget thing. So when I get fidgety, I just spin and it goes click, click, click. So that's my high tech fidget which is about worth $600. So that's the Galaxy Watch. This one's about 18 months old, so I'm not too sure how 
the newer ones are going, but um, make sure that if you do looking at Galaxy watches from Samsung, make sure they've got an internal speaker because if they don't, then you won't be able to use the internal speech. Sounds great, David. Mm. Yeah, really interesting. It's it's good knowing the differences between the two. Um, hmm. I, I know that one of the other items or bits of equipment you wear on your wrist is the uh, Sunu band. Can hmm. you tell us a bit about that, David? Indeed. So rather than overwhelming people with too many things on my wrist, I've actually taken this off today. So this is the Sunu band. I remember I said I wear it on my right wrist. So so yeah, on my right wrist. So. Basically, you've got the band on both sides like a normal traditional watch. And then this little unit that I've got my finger next to um, is actually the sonar unit. So this sends out a beam, bounces off an object, and the closer you get to it, the faster the overall sooner band vibrates. And the vibration gets to very, very hard vi and rapid vibration, I think within about 30 centimetres or arm re arm's reach. Uh, so you simply put it on like a normal watch. So if I put it on my wrist now, and you just do it up like a normal watch band. Okay, so when you're wearing it, what you do, so that's currently on my wrist now. So when when I put my hand beside my, uh, by my wrist, so it points forward when I've got it next to me on, on the side of my um, leg, so I've just got my hands beside me. This points straight ahead. Um, and it, what I find it for is really great for, I guess in cane terminology, what we call shorelining. So when I go and walk along, so I get off at a railway station, I'm walking along the wall that, you know, protecting me from falling into the ramp to go off the platform. Um, when this stops vibrating, I know that the ramp wall is finished and then I can turn in turn 180 degrees and go back down the ramp. Or the other really cool feature I've been using it for since COVID's been on, apparently people who are sighted assume that because you can't see them, then it's okay for them to stand within arm's reach of you. And we're all about social distancing at the moment. So what I tend to do with this one is I set it on 1.5 metres, which I can do for indoor navigation because this does both indoor and outdoor. I set it for 1.5 metres and then I literally have my hand pointing that way. Or if I hear somebody, I just turn my wrist in front of me and point it the other direction. And then I can confidently say, um, look, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but would, could you mind stepping back a little bit further because you know, we're all, we're all about uh, social distancing at the moment. And it's quite funny because a few people have said, oh, I didn't know you could see me. And it's like, no, I didn't see you, but my, my little thing on my wrist knew you were there. Um, so that's been coming in quite handy. So particularly when I've been traveling on public transport, um, you know, in shopping centers, all that general stuff, I've been able to not only do, you know, obstacle detection, spaces in between or spaces after walls, detect doors, because when doors come across in a wall, if, if it's open, of course, it won't, it won't vibrate. So I can tell that the walls are, the wall is there or the door is there because it doesn't vibrate. Um, it's, I find it a, a reasonably useful tool. And again, yes, I do have a mini guide, um, but with the mini guide, unless you have the little um, attachment for a cane, this one just sits on your wrist um, and you can just wear it all day. Battery wise, probably goes about six to eight hours depending on how you like it. But it's also got this really cool mode. If I've just pressed this button on the side now, so what I've done now is if I point it at the computer screen, it's actually vibrating now because the computer's there. But um, people that might've had this older unit or the older software on the unit, um, it used to have just indoor, indoor mode. So up to a certain distance and outdoor mode up to a certain distance. It's actually got a third mode now called um, navigation off, which means it doesn't vibrate at all. So you can basically turn that off in that mode and nothing will vibrate. So you can just use it quite normally. So it actually works quite nicely. Um, I've had a few low vision people use it in particular um, because 
uh, they just find it a little bit more reassuring if they're using an ID cane just to have a bit more notification of what obstacle may be coming up. And the thing I absolutely use it for all the time, I hate it when you're on the train station. So you've got your platform right in front of you with the track, but then on the, on the other side of that track, you've got another track. And half the time when you're at a station, these huge goods trains come through and they're going clickety clack and the engine's going and it's loud, loud, loud. And then your train supposedly pulls it in front of you. And because of that background noise, you can't hear it. So again, what I do is I turn my um, Suniban into outdoor mode. And my outdoor mode is normally set to three meters. Um, so in old measurements, what's that, about 10, 11, 12 feet. And then, so, and I'm literally holding my hand like that, pointing forward towards the edge of the platform. So of course, when the train comes right in front of the sensor, it starts to vibrate. Um, because there's nothing worse than scaring the public when your guide dog and you with your cane walk to the edge and start waving your cane around just to double check if the um, train's there or not. Um, so that works quite well for that. But as we always say with these devices, they're an adjunct to a cane or a guide dog or a seeing eye dog. They're not your primary orientation mobility aid. Um, they're always in combination with that. So, you know, I sometimes use my cane with my dog or just my dog but I never just use this by itself um, unless I've gone to the park with the boys and we're all just sort of mucking around together. But besides that, uh, out and about in public, I absolutely do use this with my cane or my guide dog. So um, that's the, so that's the pseudo band. So really, really useful device. Um, I think from memory telling it's only about 300 or so dollars. So it's not that expensive really, I don't think for a, a great orientation device. Uh, yeah, that's correct. Sasha, please confirm. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? Um, the Sunu bands, um, from memory, the RRP RR was about 300. Yeah. Uh, and then I think there's also a bundle as well with the uh, Aftershocks. Uh, Aftershocks, which is, I think it's 330, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, a, that's quite good. Uh, mm -hmm. And the thing about that bundle, um, that bundle, because, and the reason why we did the bundle was because you can run the Suno app on your iPhone or Android device, and then you you can connect that phone to the Aftershocks because you can make the Suno band through the app talk. So when you go through the menus and it talks about the time, uh, place destinations, uh, your indoor and outdoor navigation mode settings, all that sort of different type of stuff, it'll actually talk all that information through the aftershocks. And if you have to change that on the fly, we all know what it's like trying to hear or do things when you're in a loud, noisy environment, particularly if you are using the app. So having those aftershocks not only benefits you from using your smartphone, but also benefits you if you want to use the Suno app with the actual Suno band physical device itself. Yeah, so the Suno band on its own is uh, 300 and then the, the bundle is uh, 400 with the Aftershocks headphones. Hang on, the Aftershocks were 300 by themselves? No, the uh, Suno band is 300 <laughs> and then oh, the Suno band <laughs> and Aftershocks <laughs> okay, right. bundle is mm. 400. Good. Um, yeah, I just, that's right. Next one. No, Sorry. You carry on. I, I was um, just, I, I was just jackly going to say, for dude, that's expensive pair of aftershocks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, David, I just want to backtrack a, a little bit, mm -hmm. um, since we're on the the topic of uh, aftershocks and headphones. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's the. I think Sasha is just well, frozen. It just frozen, Sasha. <laughs> Um, but I think Sasha wanted to ask, um, did we cover the AirPods Pro? No, did we you, haven't yet. No. Yeah. Did you want to talk about that and how I it's do. applicable to someone who's vision impaired? Yep. Yep. Now, I, I know um, I've been quite, I mean, me being a blind person, I know I keep talking about blind people all the time and I forget to say low vision. So when I'm talking about blind people in general, I'm also talking about low vision people. It's just me being personally blind. I tend to forget that there are other people in the universe. Um, so I just tend to say blind. So all the stuff I've talked about so far is relevant, whether you're blind, low vision or, or anything else for that matter. So what these are, so these are my um, AirPod Pro. Now I've got them in a nice little silicon case, just to protect them from the weather. Um, so if I open them up here, are the nice little AirPods inside. And if I take them out, They've got a very nice little short AirPod spot. 
and they've yeah I have done a comparison. I'll get on the Samsung buds in a minute. I hate them. Uh, <laughs> he said quietly, um, and I'll tell you why I don't like them in a minute. Um, so and these tips, unlike the actual flex ones, these magnetically connect. So all I've got to do to put them back on is, and it's probably not going to do it now, is it? It's going to make a liar out of me now. Well, supposedly what happens, <laughs> you, can, you can just clip them back on. So they're not clipping back on at the moment. They're being naughty. All right. So, but the, the main thing I like about these AirPods, so particularly when connecting to other devices, uh, such as your iPod Touch, um, your iPhone, all that sort of stuff, you can definitely connect them automatically, but you can also use them as normal, quote, Bluetooth headphones. Now, the really cool thing about it, and this is coming into why I don't like the Samsung Buds, we've got this thing called transparency mode. So you've got transparency mode, you've got noise noise reduction. So noise reduction means when you're using the actual um, AirPods, it blocks out all the sound around you. Um, so if I, if I wake this in my ear, it blocks out all the sound around me. Um, except certain types of sounds. So you can still hear rough environmental sounds, but you know, it's it's all muffled in a way, but muffled in a way that I don't mean you can't identify what the sounds are. They're just reduced in volume of the sound. Now the transparency mode, which you can get to by simply squeezing the stem of these AirPods. What the transparency mode does, because these earphones have got an internal and an internal microphone, and they're monitoring the sound outside your ear and inside your ear. And what the transparency mode does, it brings out the outside noise and puts it into your, into your ear. So I can, I can be orientating myself around with, um, you know, a talking navigation system, still hear that, but still absolutely hear the surroundings. You know, if a car's coming up behind me or somebody's talking to me, all that sort of stuff works. Now, where these differ humongously from the Samsung Buds, the sound you get out of the AirPods is stereo and it's directional. So if I hear a car coming up behind me, the car's coming up behind me. If I hear a cyclist coming up the footpath in front of me on my right-hand side or left, they're on my right-hand side or left. What happens with the transparency mode on the Samsung Buds, and they call it ambient mode, is I hear the sound, but I can't tell where it's coming from which from a low vision or blind person's point of view is extremely dangerous. Um, even in the house, when I try and use my Samsung Buds, I've got a pair over there on the um, on my bookshelf. I can't tell where my wife is talking to me in the house because it just sounds like she's talking all around me. Um, and the so the, the ambient mode is, is almost useless. I do love the fact about the... Um, the Samsung Buds, because remember the, these ones just basically go in your ear with that tip. Now you can get three different types of tips, but the Samsung Buds have this little, and some people call it like a, a sports thin uh, on the back, like a thin of a shark. And what it does is you put them in your ear and you, and you sort of twist it back that way. And the, the thing at the back here goes under the cartilage of your ear and almost locks the, the buds into your ear. So you get this really good solid seal. So if you're traveling in a really noisy train or an aircraft and you're not moving and you feel quite safe, then the, the buds, the Samsung buds really do block out a heck of a lot of sound. Um, but because I switch between transparency mode and noise reduction on the AirPods, and I just like the fact that I know where sounds are coming from, um, these ones a bit better. And the other thing, if you're low, if you've got hearing issues, um, what you can do with the AirPods is I can put my iPhone in front of my wife in a restaurant. So she's normally up the other end of the table. I turn my earphone mode on on my AirPods and then she can read out the menu for him without yelling out, David, David, I'm trying to get your attention. Do you want the main course or not? Um, she can just speak normally into my iPhone and that mic then transmits what she's saying to my AirPods and she can just talk to me. I can't talk back to her, but it's, it's really fantastic for doing that type of thing. So that works really nicely. Um, so that sort of hearing mode function, which main media calls calls it spying um, is really fantastic. So, you know, the aftershocks are good for bone conduction. Um, the AirPods are great for a lot more flexibility with transparency mode, noise reduction. 
Um, of course, you've got HEY Siri, all that sort of really, really cool stuff. And the Beats Flex, uh, they're the, the cheap ones because the the AirPods Pro, and I may be wrong about this, but I think they sit around about the $300 mark, so they're not cheap. Um, the Beats Flex is a good all-round pair of basic headphones that, you know, if you break them or sit on them or lose them like I do all the time, you're not going to be too fast. Because the Aftershocks, I believe, um, Sasha, I know you mentioned that we can get that bundle, but I think by themselves, they normally retail for about 130 uh, And yes, the AirPods can connect to um, Samsung. What they'll do, they'll just connect as a, quote, normal piece of Bluetooth headphones. So you can still use... I th- no, I'll rephrase that. I think you can still use the transparency mode and the noise reduction because they seem to just be on the head, the AirPods themselves. But don't quote me on that. Just double check that maybe perhaps with Apple. Um, but you definitely can use them. You can't use that hearing mode that I said, like I put my iPhone in front of somebody. That's specifically only for iOS and the iPhone. Um, but they really are a good pair of earphones. Um, and the charging case that I've got here, of course, you plop it on the back of on a, on a Wi-Fi charger and off it goes. And if you are lucky to own the the new magnetic charger that just came in with the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro, um, when you put these down on one of the magnetic chargers, um, you're guaranteed to put it in the right spot because the magnets will grab a hold of it. Whereas on my, God bless its little cotton socks, my normal wireless charger, it's got a beautiful colored area that when you're supposed to put it down on, and if I get it slightly off, um, it doesn't charge my AirPods. So really good pair of headphones. Um, this is about my third set because um, I've gone from sort of version one to version two to version three. Um, but every time Apple makes an upgrade, it, it's certainly worthwhile. But as a really good, if you're particularly from the iPhone universe, um, it, they're fantastic. And again, like with the Beats Flex, you can also use them across your, your iOS devices as well. With the um, AirPods, um, can they connect to Samsung phones? That's like a question from Andrew. Yes, yes they can. Yeah, they just oh, have like, they just have like normal Bluetooth devices. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got another question um, from Irina, and she's wanting um, she's interested to hear more about the latest low vision technology options for reading. Um, her 91 year old dad needs something simple that captures more than just a few words at a time so i thought maybe um the all cam might be uh something to discuss because mm-hmm. I've, I've had a bit of a play with it and find it quite simple to use so um yep. i might ask you about the different options with all cam yep so tony I'll, I'll leave you to talk about the different models because every time i talk about the different models i i get confused so let me talk about the features that i use on my one now i've i'm currently not wearing these on my glasses at the moment um because i thought i was going to look i probably look too sinister because i've normally got this attached to my sunglasses and i thought wearing sunglasses when you're on a webinar is a bit weird um so this is the orcam itself so normally this would sit like that on a pair of glasses because it's got a little magnet on the side here which attacks the little magnet strip that you attach to your your frames of your glasses. And this just points forward. And what's nice about this being hands-free is that you can do this a few ways. So you can simply press the button on the side on the touch bar here, and it's going to take a picture of absolutely nothing at the moment. Um, And it will actually take a picture of what it's looking at and give you the information. So it'll read it back to you. So that would say if you're looking at a a bus sign, if you're looking at stuff in your pantry, uh, if you're looking at a piece of mail and you want it translated into text and have it read back to you, that's really good. So that's more of what a blind person does with it. But for a sighted person, what's really cool about it is if you use your pointer finger um, and you point at some text on a, a document where you want to start reading from or you point to a sign, the camera will basically focus on where your finger is pointing, then take the photo and start reading to you. And the same deal with barcodes. You can point to a barcode um, because sometimes it's hard for the camera to just generally find a barcode. So you point to the barcode and it goes, aha, you're pointing at a barcode, we'll beat it back to you. So you can do it manually way, just take a photo tapping on the side, or you can actually point 
So it's like the old, it, it, it's a new version of the old point and shoot with a camera. This time you're pointing with your finger and then it's shooting with, it's shooting with the camera to take a picture of what it thinks you're, it's looking at. You've also got face recognition. So it'll tell you if a person that you know walks into a room or it'll just say person in front of you. Um, it does have another mode, which I think is a little bit funny because it sometimes thinks my wife is um, 13 years old because it says young child. Then it says um, young lady. What it hasn't what it hasn't said so far is older person, uh, which I think she'd probably get a bit cross about. Uh, but so far, she's been classified as a young child and a, and a young lady. So she's pretty cool about that. Um, the other thing it's got is also... Um, Colour, it's also got colour detection. So if you want to check out what colours are, it does that as well. Um, and like I said, you you don't you might have noticed I've got this little lanyard on the end of it uh, because this thing around my neck, I normally attach that if I'm using it with my hands, but normally it, it's sort of sitting next to my glasses pointing forward. Um, and I can just, and the reason why you want to point is because you're, again, you're using your hands free. You're not holding anything. And the other really cool thing it does, and I don't know if it's going to do it because I'm actually holling it. Let me just do this. No, it's not going to do it. All right. Because if you hold up your wrist in front of the camera, as if you were checking your watch on your wrist, it'll also give you the time and date. Um, and it does have very easy modes where you can go into the menu. You can change how fast it talks. What I normally say is you get it set up by somebody who knows how to set it up. So you get the right speech. Um, you say get the right um, settings for the actual uh, product barcode recognition, face recognition. Um, you know, if you're a senior and you want to identify other children, you can get it to go into face recognition mode. It takes lots of snapshots of the person's face or the child's face and then you save it and you put a name onto it with your own voice so it goes so mine will say ellen owen lachlan and so on um so it, it's very easy to use from that point of because at the end of the day what you do you have it on your what your your pair of glasses you point at something it reads it back to you and then there's a few other things that we do but at the end of the day it's all about using your hand to do gestures to activate it most of the time you don't even have to touch this at all. It just sits on your glasses, behaves itself and does what it's told. So Tony, do you just want to go back into the, into the more updated version of this? Because every time I do that, I always get tongue tied and confused. Sure. <laughs> so the OrCam um, comes in two different models, as David mentioned. Uh, one is called the MyEye Pro. That is the one that does text recognition, facial recognition, money recognition, all the advanced features. Um, including color recognition, object recognition. Whereas if you just wanted the model that just does text recognition only, that is called the MyEye Smart. Um, these are the new model names for the AllCam. There is also uh, one more model called the AllCam Read. This is more of a handheld version of the AllCam, whereas the AllCam you mount it onto your um, spectacles um, the OrCam Read is um, just a handheld version uh, where you hold it onto your hand and you push a button uh, on the control panel on the side and it captures the text and reads it out to you. The OrCam Read only does text recognition. So if you wanted to um, have a trial or have a demonstration of these particular units, I would highly recommend that you go to your local uh, Vision Australia office and one of the Vision Australia um, Vision Store team members will be able to help you with that. Um, David, there are a couple of questions um, from our audience. Mm -hmm. um, one is, how about the new spatial audio feature in the uh, AirPods Pro? Can you discuss about that? Yep, apparently that works absolutely beautifully with Netflix. So if you want this spatial, spatial surround sound when you're watching or listening to a Netflix movie, then have a go at some of the movies. Um, I haven't tried that yet personally, but I was talking about the other day with another guy that I know called Scott Erickson, who's very into testing stuff, the same as me. Um, and he absolutely 100% assured me um, that it works really well with the, uh, the the spatial spatial effects. I wish they'd also implement one like the old Bose frames had with Soundscape. And that's the sort of the 3D audio navigation where it tells you what's around you. Um, I, I, I just wish they'd make that for the AirPods Pro because we've already got spatial audio. 
Um, I don't know if Apple would call it 3D audio yet or not, but that would be absolutely amazing if you had soundscape running. And so when you were listening to stuff, you really did that, get that full spatial effect uh, of what's around you and what's around you when you're moving. That would be absolutely brilliant. Uh, thanks, David. Um, there's another question. Um, can the latest Apple Watch be independently used or do you have to pair it with a phone? Okay, so that's a good question because at the moment, so when Apple released the new phones uh, and they talked about the new Apple Watch, they talked about this thing called family sharing with the Apple Watch. So I remember normally it's one Apple Watch per iPhone. What it is now is now I believe, again, I think it's up to six family members because that's what family sharing is. So you could have one iPhone managing six Apple Watches. Now that's currently not available in Australia. It's not turned on yet. Um, I will let people know uh, via Twitter or my Talking Tech Vision Australia radio program or anywhere else I can possibly let you know. Um, Cause I think that's fantastic as both my boys um, are getting higher into high school. I'd love them just to have their Apple Watch and me actually be able to set it up so that then they don't need to actually worry about having an iPhone each and an Apple Watch each. Um, it gets a bit expensive. but So at the moment, no, but soon you will be able to. Now, just a warning, though, um, that will only work with the Apple Watch S6 or SE, I believe, because it needs the cellular part of the watch to operate because it is in both out and about cellular mode and GPS mode. It will absolutely not work with the S3, which was the the current watch that's now about three or four years old, because when they brought out the S6 and the SC, that S3, which did have cellular, is now GPS only. So while it's a, while it's a cheap phone, uh, sorry, cheap watch, it doesn't have all those extra features in it um, that I mentioned about fall detection and specifically the family sharing. But hopefully that family sharing um, will come in later this year. I'm having another chat with Apple um, in early November uh, and I'm just going to ask them, uh, can they let me roughly know where we're looking at, you know, 2021 for the family sharing to be in, in Australia? Because as we all might know, in the US, you've also got the ECG or the EKG mode, EKG mode where you can hold your finger on the digital crown and get your pulse reading. Um, that's not currently authorised in Australia to use uh, because the thera Therapeutic Goods Administration hasn't authorised it yet for Australia. So hopefully, hopefully family sharing will be out soon. Oh, thank you, David. Um, we have a question which I can probably answer <laughs> from Karen, who has asked um, which OrCam model has the smart reading feature, um, voice activation instead of the touch and point. So the OrCam, the MyEye Pro and MyEye Smart, both of them have the smart reader function and both models allow you to use voice activation instead of point or touch, uh, point or um or touch uh, the control panel if you wanted to. So it's both models that offer that smart uh, reading feature. Mm. And the OrCam reader, which is the handheld version, um, that comes in two models, one with the smart reading um, feature and one without the smart reading um, feature. So if you wanted the smart reading feature, then you would get the model that has the smart reading feature. Uh, pricing, um, Karen has asked for the pricing. Um, so the OrCam, the pricing starts at um, $6,250. Um, and that's the model that just does text recognition only. Um, if you want all the features, then you would um, be paying $7,250. The OrCam Read um, pricing starts at Eight, uh, sorry, $4,850, depending on whether you want the um, smart reading features or not. So I hope that answers your questions, Karen. Um, are there any other questions from our audience? Um, we have um, about seven minutes left in this particular uh, webinar. If you have any questions, please ask us through the chat box. I should, say, I should say to if most of the stuff that I talked about today, I've done a podcast on. Um, so, you know, the, the Samsung earbuds, um, I'm doing one of the Beats Flex um, actually this afternoon to put up on my feed. 
Um, so if you just search for David Woodbridge IC, various technologies from a blind person's perspective, you'll find it in there. I'm actually going to go through it again next week in my Talking Tech show as well. Um, but I'll be putting a full demo up on that. Um, I'm doing more demos on the on the Apple Watch as well. Um, I've done ones on the Aftershocks. I've done one on the Orcam. Um, Tony, do we have demos on our YouTube channel with the RS Vision? Um, no, but we can make one. Mm. So, Definitely. Because I, I think that'll be really handy because... Because um, particularly with both the OrCam and the RS Vision, we always say just try and organise where you can come in or have some way come in and show it to you because it is such a, a reasonably pricey device uh, and you want to be sure that it actually meets all your needs, uh, then do it that way. And a tip that I always say, and I don't know if it's a place to the Irish Vision, Tony, but I know that's with the OrCam, just bring some samples of the stuff you'd, you might want to actually access. So, for example, um, handwritten letters, uh, stuff in the pantry, um, different types of books you might want to read, magazines, bills, all that sort of stuff. Because you know what it's like when you walk into a car yard and you see these beautiful, nice, shiny cars? Well, the same with some tech stuff. You know, it's like, oh, it's beautiful and shiny. It has all these features and it makes you breakfast in the morning. What you want to make sure, of, though, is that it meets your individual needs. And that's why we say that typically with some of this stuff, it's really important to either have somebody assess it for you or have a show and a good play with the product and then you'll know it will 100 percent absolutely fit you um tony do we do we have any suggestions with the iris vision about maybe people bringing in stuff that they might want to look at like knitting patterns or anything else that they might find useful to use the iris vision with yeah definitely um <clears throat> I, I would highly recommend bringing uh, magazines and books as you had mentioned that they are interested in reading um if they are an avid cooker or, or like to do arts and crafts, I would bring in those type of books as well to um, test it out. Um, likewise with uh, the OrCam as well, uh, I would highly recommend bringing those types of reading material. Um, a bill that you might be um, wanting to find out, you know, when the due date is, how much it is, who was it from, um, those would be um, practical examples of um, documentation that I would bring into um, when, whilst trialling these particular equipment. Mm. Um, there's another question from Lindy. Um, how comfortable are the bone conduction um, earphones um, over time? Uh, extremely comfortable. So with the original ones that I had, geez, I don't know, five years ago, um, you sort of ended up with this sort of dent <laughs> in your skin just in front of your ears. Um, whereas with the newer ones, they really do sit quite snugly uh, and, and comfortably. So the, these ones here, the, the little pods that sit next to your skin are really, really comfortable. Um, and it, they're just comfy. I don't even know I'm wearing these. I, I call these my audio sunglasses uh, because sometimes my boys will say, Dad, you've still got your, you've still got your back to front things on. Um, so they, they're really comfortable. You literally do not know you're wearing them. And the other thing I found with the previous versions, particularly when you turn the sound up a bit more, it really felt you had this sort of almost like a vibration mode sitting on your skin. So it would actually get a bit irritated. You can turn these up full ball and they don't irritate your skin. You actually can't feel them vibrating at all. The, the sound's actually very, very stable. And like I said, the core quality, um, if you ever tried the pair of the, the old titanium ones or even the airs, the, the previous one to this one, um, these ones are really, really clear. Um, so again, no, there's, there's, they're actually extremely comfortable earphones to I normally wear these most of the day so even though I'm still using my airpods which go on my ear I've always got these on my heads now so so these are called the aftershocks open move excellent so, yes yeah, so, so see how you go so these are the open move the airs and the titanium um not so much the airs but I know the titanium used to irritate me a bit these are perfect these are really really good ones uh due to the interest of time I might have uh, to answer a couple of more questions um, how easy is it to use the OrCam for a blind person? Um, yes, a blind person can use the OrCam. You just need some training um, with one of our staff members. So um, yes, that they can be used by someone who's blind. Um, David is a perfect example of him using the OrCam. Um, does the OrCam work in the dark? Um, no. 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 <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you need it no. to, uh, to be uh, in a light um, yep. condition. 
Yeah, um, because yeah, I mean, the basic premise is it's a camera. Yep. So if the camera's not getting any light coming into the sensor, then it's not going to operate. So uh, so if you're in a vault somewhere under the ground looking for treasure in a dungeon somewhere, then no, it won't absolutely work. Sorry, I was just reading a, um, a science fiction fantasy book about dungeons. So I had to slip that in at the last moment. But yeah, no. Yep. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. So if you have any other questions, um, please contact the Vision Store team on 1300 847466. Or you can email your questions to visionstore at visionaustralia.org. Um, and one of our retail staff members can help you with your queries today, or if you wanted a further demonstration on the actual product itself. At the end of this webinar, there will be a short survey for you to complete. Any feedback that you can provide will assist us in improving our content and deliver our future webinars. We'll love you to join us for our next Exploring Technology uh, with David Woodbridge webinar next month. Um, the topic would be um, Christmas gifts ideas, as mm. Christmas is coming up very, very soon, <laughs> and we're all excited about that. Uh, please check your emails and our website for further details. Thank you and goodbye, everyone, for joining us at this uh, webinar. And thank you, Sash and David, for enlightening us with all your information about these wearable devices. That's thank okay. you. I really enjoyed it. I always learn a lot from David and technology. So um, yeah. thank you for thank you. your expertise. Thank you. Can I just add, Tony, that um, if people use Twitter and you want to follow me on Twitter, please do so because that's where I tweet all my playing and information. So that's at D Woodbridge. So just D and then Woodbridge, like it sounds. So D W O O D B O D G at D Woodbridge. And you can, you know, send me a message if you want. Uh, check out my retweets and everything else I do on social media and podcasting. So I'm glad you enjoyed today. Um, by the way, just quickly, the Aftershocks were the Aftershocks open move. Uh, so if you go to www.aftershocks.com.au, that's the website there. Um, it's a bit confusing, not very screen reader friendly. Um, so ring, ring up the Vision Store and we can certainly point you in, and um, give you demonstrations in shop anyway. Thank you everyone for attending. Bye.